My name is Ben Stroll. I'm a housing case manager for the Pen Free Housing Program and HUD VASH program at Veterans Leadership Program. Uh, Veterans Leadership Program helps veterans in uh, Western Pennsylvania. Um, we help them with employment, housing. We help uh, veterans attain, attain uh, self-sustainability through our housing programs. We have different. We have the uh, HPR, HVRP uh, employment program, which assists homeless veterans in finding in, uh, jobs to obviously increase their income to get them into stable housing. We uh, operate a couple of HUD grants for disabled veterans and their families to find them permanent housing. We have some transitional housing programs, and uh, I operate the Pen Free Housing Program. It's a housing program for drug and alcohol veterans with former DNA problems. I think uh, this new generation of veterans is having a lot of uh, problems transitioning with obviously the economy. There's not really not a lot of jobs for veterans to go in that aren't you know entry level minimum wage jobs. If you're accustomed to making you know thirty five forty thousand dollars a year as an E five and you're coming out making. 750 an hour, which are some of the jobs that are being offered to these veterans, obviously that's a substantial pay cut and it's hard to maintain the, the housing that you did have prior to exiting the service. And another challenge I think a lot of veterans are facing is the reintegration into civilian society now after such a prolonged period of war. Um, a lot of the veterans are facing, you know, three, four, five, in some cases more than six deployments. Um, that takes a mental toll on the veteran. and. Uh, the reintegration is a hard part of it. The VA is doing a good job of identifying the you know, PTSD. There's a, a significant increase in traumatic brain injury from this war. I mean, they used to be called shell shock or whatever incarnation it is. You know, it's the, the mental health factor of the veterans that's really, you know, that's a significant barrier to employment and to, to uh, attaining and, and retaining long-term safe, affordable housing. I joined the service. Uh, I went to the recruiter's office September 12, 2001. I, I felt that the, the uh, attacks on September 11th was our generation's call to arms and uh, the previous generations before us. I was one of the uh, Americans who answered that call. Um, in the service, I was in the United States Navy. I was on the uh, USS Dextrous, USS Avenger, and USS Gladiator, all minesweepers. Um, in the Navy, I was a minesweeping electrician and an interior communications electrician. Uh, I advanced through the Navy. I got out of the Navy as an E-6. I did uh, two tours in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. I did a tour in support of Operation Noble Eagle. We did uh, Q routes, mine sweeping. We mapped the signature of the, the f uh, uh, ocean floor off the coastal waters of the United States, off the West Coast. And in the uh, Persian Gulf on my deployments there, we swept for mines and uh, did maritime security operations in the uh, Northern Arabian Gulf and in some brown water into going into Iraq. Um, I got out of the Navy in 2010 and I began going to school full time at Robert Morris to pursue my undergraduate degree in social science with a concentration in history and government. And then I, I was doing well at school so I decided to, uh, I got accepted into the integrated master's program. And I consequently got my master's degree and uh, graduated from school. and working here at the Veterans Leadership Program. A lot of my studies in school were geared towards veterans issues. I mean, that was a big part of my life being in the military. Once I got out, I wanted to continue to serve. I wanted to continue to help the, the veterans. I see a, a lot of social problems manifesting from the, the system that's in place to help veterans. I mean, it's, it's in the process of being corrected. The VAs, I mean, they're overhauling things. It, it, it's, a, it's a fluid situation over there. I mean, they're trying to, there's only so much they can do with the numbers that are, you know, the numbers of personnel getting out of the military, the numbers of, you know, trauma and the different mental health issues that are coming along with being discharged now. I mean, the, the veterans backlog. So I, I felt that that was where I could best continue to serve would be helping guys that I served with. So I focused a lot of my undergraduate studies and my graduate studies on contemporary veteran social issues. And this was a, this was like a hand into the glove to come work here. So. I'm happy to be doing it. Just the, the, the reacclimation to civilian life, I think, is a hard adjustment for any veteran coming out of the service. I mean, you're going from such a regimented day to wake up, there's no one in the apartment. You, know, you, could, you could sit on the couch and watch Family Guy all day if you wanted to, but I mean, that's not, you're not going to be a productive, a productive citizen by doing that. So I think that, I think it's definitely a case by case basis, but I, I 
I knew what I wanted. I had clear, I had clear defined goals of what I wanted to accomplish when I got out of the Navy. And I think that, you know, sometimes when service members are separating, they don't have perhaps maybe a mentor to say, okay, well, what do you want to do when you get out? And I think, you know, here's your sea bag, leaving at the gate. See you later. You know, and they're stuck and there's that, you know, a couple months where they're deciding what to do. And that's when, that's when you need to be having the most support. That's when the veteran needs the, the access to the resources. That's the, the initial uh, period of separation is when, when you see the most instances of veterans becoming homeless. You see the most instances of veterans, you know, not getting a job. And these are the things that lead to the, you know, chronic veteran homelessness that, you know, this, you see the vets hang, holding signs on the, on the street corner. I mean, they, they had to start somewhere. Um, to aid the situation, I mean, I, I write your congressman, write your senator. I mean, that is standards, you know, civic procedures of, of getting things done. I mean, the VA right now, there's a big push to have the VA funded in advance. So the VA wouldn't be uh, subject to the sequestration or the automatic uh, uh, cutbacks. I know that they just voted yesterday to stop the cutbacks, but I mean it's probably still going to happen. Let's be let's be frank. But um, in terms of helping agencies and other uh, veterans organizations, can, uh, donate donate your time, donate your resources. If you want to bake cookies, uh, you know anything that you can do to help, pitch in um, in. in Regardless, it's going to be appreciated, and it's going to be it's going to be noticed, and it's going to it's going to have a significant impact on someone's life. I mean, even you know, dropping off some some magazines in the waiting room for guys to read. I mean, that it, it means a lot. I mean, it would take take their mind off of something. It'll keep them from potentially having you know their mind from wandering somewhere where it shouldn't be going. You know, some of these guys have you know they they can't get their mind back to Allegheny County to Pittsburgh. They're you know, they're still in Iraq, they're still in Afghanistan. Some of these guys are still in Vietnam. I mean, any, it, you know, I don't want to say diversion, but, you know, it, it helps to know that, you know, there's some normalcy and just little, little tangible things that you could do to help if you can't make a significant, you know, donation to help a veteran with, you know, rent or anything like that. Little things add up and they really do help a lot. You can access our Facebook site, uh, Veterans Leadership Program of Western Pennsylvania. You can access our website, uh, neverforgetvets.org. Um, you can always call down to the agency. Um, we have a good outreach and a community outreach program. The people upstairs do a great job of, of contacting people that want to help with the, with the people here that can put the help that they're offering to the best use.